In 1937, 22 feet of water stood over these raised beds. I asked Angie, what was that earthen wall? She said, it's holding back the Ohio River. I said, I have to see this. Ashland was home to no less than five Native American groups when Scots-Irish settled there in 1783. Iron deposits were discovered in Ashland in 1800, which led to an influx of industry over the next two centuries. Oh, wow. The Ohio River is a massive waterway, nearly a thousand miles long. For centuries, iron, coal, and petroleum have made their way up nearly 200 miles of the Big Sandy and into the mighty Ohio, bound for destinations across the eastern United States. In 1937, everybody along the Ohio and Mississippi rivers knew what was coming, but they couldn't stop it. It's been called the Great Flood. The flood reached its high point of 74.3 feet on January 27th. In 1938, Congress authorized Ashland for the Flood Control Act. However, it took two more floods in 1943 before work began in 1949. The ashland catlettsburg flood wall system features 13,530 feet of reinforced concrete dike, 777 feet of earth levee, six pump stations, and 17 traffic openings through the wall. It was completed in 1953. His nickname was the Great Compromiser. Robert Dafford, one of the most prolific and successful muralists in America, painted the nine original murals with the interconnected goals of historic preservation, education, and economic development. Flooding along the Ohio is really not that uncommon. It's a lot worse before the locks and bands. As we turned to the car, I spotted an amazing garden across the road and ran over to investigate. It belongs to Judy Fannin, locally known for her gardens, her cookbooks, and her generosity. This is a Northeaster, and it's very, it's the best bean I've ever had. No strings, all you do is take the ends like this, and you get five or six pieces of mm -hmm. bean. Mm -hmm. Cook them just like half runners, mm -hmm. with some bacon grease and a ham hock, and a little bit of onion and pepper and add salt at the end and they're great and I used to grow half runners and three color tricolor beans and these so just these now and why did you switch because no no string no just because they're so tasty oh and 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 the half runners my husband loved them but I don't this is a much better bean it tastes like it. it's very hard to find only, I think it's Johnny's Selected Seeds, and you have to get it very early because they sell out. Like a Kentucky Pole Bean, I don't like those. They're too, they're just not good and tender like this. These, I have four kinds of sweet potatoes. <clears throat> that is Old Henry, they're all, this is a white, white sweet potato, which mm. is what I love. Candy sweet potatoes, and I have recipe books. I'll have to show you my recipe. Okay. Maybe give me a plug for those. Yeah. I've got some down here. I'll give you one. So this is the Nita. Uh, you've heard of Beauregard. Everybody's heard of Beauregard. Sweet. Yes. And then that is Old Henry. And it's almost a white one. Beauregard is not, it's not a, these are sweet potatoes, not gates. And I just adore them. This will give me enough sweet potatoes for the whole county. For the whole what? County. I mean, this, oh. will be, this will be, well, we dig these up in the fall, and some of them will be this big, you know, this big red. And what will you do with the Oh, I'll just give them away. Oh, wow. One year, my church, the youth group helped me a little bit, 
and they raised four hundred dollars. They they sold the they made a sweet potato cookbook and it's online on Etsy at the Jude Cook with Judy Fannin. And it's a sweet potato cookbook. And the young people at church uh, helped me dig them and sold them at church. Tell me the difference between a white the white southern okay. white sweet potato a and yam the yam is those real dark orange. They're kind of mealy. Um, I don't know how to. They're stringy. They're fibrous. Yeah. Uh, stringy. And the white sweet potato is dense like a white potato, really. But it's a sweet potato. And it's marvelous. My, my mother in law cooked them, made the candy sweet potatoes. But sweet potatoes, I know you know this, are grown all over the world, every country. And probably they're the best vegetable that we could ever eat to be honest with you. Including the leaves. Do you eat the leaves? Oh, you can. Oh, yeah, they're wonderful. Yeah. But I didn't know they bloomed until this year. Now, this one's blooming. I don't remember them ever blooming in the past. <sighs> yeah, you, uh, the sweet potato, the leaves are marvelous. Usually my peppers are not doing this well early in the season. The leaves fall off, but they're doing pretty good. The only green ones I have are here, so nobody, I won't let anybody else pick them. You can see I'm getting them. Um, this is a jalapeno, or this may be a pimento. This is a pimento. But I've got yellow, orange, purple, and red. I've already picked some purple ones. I think this is a red one. Come look at this one. But I can't pick them yet until they turn. And I've got about eight kinds of cucumbers. Somebody watered when I was gone, and they got some water on the leaves. You cannot use city water to water vegetables. So I was sick. I was out of town for two weeks. So. This is okra. Are you familiar with okra? Love okra. I do too. Okay. I had a row of beautiful. This is regular okra. And I had a whole row of the red okra, but only these three came up. So I didn't even know those three were coming up, so I planted eggplant. But they like to be sheltered by the okra. You know nothing likes potatoes. Um, white potatoes or blue potatoes. So you can't ever plant those with anything else or it'll kill them. And this is a little flower bed. There goes Cosmos and Zenius. That's kale. Is it late for kale? Do you... I've already cooked two messes, but I'm just leaving it up for the show. No, it, this will be good cooked. Yeah, kale actually will survive the heat pretty well here. Yeah. Um, I was gone, and we had planted another row of marigolds. And the marigold seeds may come up, but they may not. All right, this is my spare to spend. Of course, I've had this for like five or six years. You know, if you don't cut it when it's this high, then it goes to an asparagus fern. It's still coming up. And so it, when I, I, could, I had my knife, I could just cut it. That's all I will go away from tomorrow. And there's two there we'll cut. You see those two there? That one will be about right by tomorrow. And here's a note. And you cannot cut this fern down and I'll wait till the last thing of the, before Christmas. The asparagus fern you cannot be trimmed back. You can't help me out. You can't cut them before um, they are finished with their cycle because if you cut them too early, then the asparagus won't come back, or if it does, it'll be really weak. Because they start in about April. Do you have an asparagus bed? Not this year, no. Well, it takes years to get it going. Yes, yellow squash and zucchini bed. I just picked, I'll wait till tomorrow. So you got some mildew. No, I do. Too late. Too late. I have to spray for mildew before it ever appears. And I fight it with my dahlias and zinnias and um, flocks in their flower gardens. So there's a spray. Kim, what's the name of the spray you use for the mildew? Well, she just mixes it. Ones. See, it's already hit this. And it's, it's too late, I told her. So do you just cut the leaves that have the mildew? And, and no, I've oh. never had it this early. But I, that might be a good idea, huh? These are my sunflowers. I'm gonna plant another row. I gotta go out. And here's my gourds. Now, what, what, all the last few years, at my flower garden, back behind Lexington, I've grown the gourds. Last year, the deer ate every one of them when they were about this high. Yep. So I moved them down here. And because you've got a fence around this whole thing, right? Well, there's no deer here. There's railroad tracks over there and then a highway. I've never seen a deer down here ever. They couldn't jump this, but they could jump that oh, little bit. Oh, they definitely can jump. Well, this is Kim Jenkins. 
I already told her you're our babysitter for our family. What is your role in this garden? I designed it originally. Yes, she did. Because my son wanted to learn how to garden. So we designed this garden because my grandfather had been a farmer in North Georgia. He raised uh, peaches, had a wonderful peach orchard, pigs, chickens, and vegetables, and would go around in his truck and sell to the old timey country stores. And I was living with him when my father was in World War II. So I would get on the back of the truck, they allowed that, and go in and sell my granddaddy's produce. That's how I love a garden started. But this, um, I'd always had gardens out at the, in the country when we had a big house out there. Had several big gardens. And Kim was our babysitter. She probably helped to the garden. Then we moved to town. And I told you that the deer ate up all the vegetables at my flower garden. So when my son wanted to learn to garden and he owned this building, Kim designed it and it had all these beds. They've been replaced once, so they probably could be replaced again. Poison ivy. Well, I'm highly allergic to it. I didn't think we had, well, Kim has just discovered poison ivy, so she's a perfectionist. It's a wonderful landscape business. This is unusual because we're on the tour. Um, it has to be perfect, I mean, nearly perfect. With each year, the last three years, the weeds have gotten progressively worse and worse and worse. And so we fought it and so we're fighting it. That's we're weeding for about the fifth or sixth time already. Oh boy! The Johnson grass over here was this was always my lettuce bed, like last year because it, it really liked this location. But I took my lettuce and grew it in in town in pots, and it did great. I had romaine and bib, huge heads in pots. So everything else, I, I don't have any corn. Uh, one year I tried, but you had, are supposed to have four rows of pollination, and I don't have a bed big enough. My name is Judy Fannin. I live in Ashland, Kentucky, but this is in my vegetable garden in Calixburg because you cannot grow vegetables in Ashland, downtown Ashland, or anywhere because of all the deer that eat everything. I thought I saw blue in here. I plant everything too close together. Usually nothing, you know, only half of it lives. <laughs> Oh, okay, here's a, here's a, that will become a okra, I think. See that little thing? Oh, I've got a plan for this. I'll bring it tomorrow so you can see it. It's Rapunzel. I love it. See them all? And I this do. Is, yeah, I've already, I fixed some of them. There's one down there. This is a Rutgers tomato. Heirloom tomatoes, you have to pick before they ripen. And you cannot sucker them either. So therefore... I don't know which of my tomatoes are heirloom and which aren't, so I haven't suckered them. The Tasteful Tomato, I think that's where I order some of my plants. It's a wonderful uh, site in Alabama. It's called the Tasteful, the Tasteful Garden, sorry. And they have wonderful plants. They're expensive. They're like $5.95 each. But they, are, they have some varieties that are just awesome. And they're mostly heirloom, and you do not sucker them. I did not know that. Of course, they're they're just handed down. And then the hybrid tomatoes, you you can, but I I'm not sure. This other friend, see see how he's put these, and see that one back here. Come back here and get this. Before it starts to rain again. Yeah. He's going to have to put me in the kitchen on this one. These little cherry, these small tomatoes. They could just get big and just, but I want you to come back here and see this plant. This is Beef Master. And this plant, I don't know how many green tomatoes are on it. I would say 12 or 15, maybe. And I can't let's see. This one is gorgeous, this plant here. Can you see? They're, they're, Boy, they're all they're over it, yeah. Huge. I use pantyhose. I use hose, I tie up my dahlias with them, and then I, I think they work well for tomatoes, but it doesn't rub them it doesn't like rub twine will. As, as they come up, mm -hmm. can you see how? Mm -hmm. And this is what I use on dahlias. Keep tying them. I'm very impressed. I've gardened all my life, too. Well, it's, all right, let's go ahead and cut the
Do we have everything? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I just kept carrying it around because I didn't know if it'd start this deep. This is the best start. 10,000 years of the river flooding this flood area over the years has made this black, wonderful dirt. So it's like black gold. Black gold. Yeah, well, how does flooding make soil richer? If you look at the river right now, it's all dirty. It looks like a Willy Walker's chocolate river. It's full of minerals and sand. Over the years, it just floods it, brings it in, mixes it in with the old clay. Mm -hmm. it just makes it's all. So no building has ever been in this spot? Yes, there has been. This was 800 recipes. That's my house, it's in Avenue. Yes, this is... It's month to month, it's fabulous. I took recipes from the other 2200 and I organized them in categories. From, like May is all Kentucky recipes and December is all the holiday recipes and April is all seafood. If you read this forward, mm -hmm. this tells the story. It was this, this was a gift to my family and friends. I sent out letters to my Christmas card list, and I gave away about 325 of them. I'm now on my 19th printing of this. I mean, everybody just loves this book. Wow. If they don't cook, they read them. Now, my newest one, I did not put the people's names. You put Kentucky Derby Pie recipe Oh, it's, oh there's oh everything in there. Oh, my gosh. May is all Kentucky. Kentucky Derby Pie. That's all I'm saying. That's, that's all I'm saying. See, Marsha Van Ober, do you know her? She, she's an artist, local artist. Yes. So she did my artwork for my HC. There's March. Oh. It's hoops, shamrocks, and bunnies. St. Patrick's. It's theme related. February's menus for those you love. Oh. Five menus from each of my kids. It's just a fabulous book. So she, that's the cover. November is all new recipes. That There are people still sending recipes. But this is the last cookbook I've ever Everything. In this one, I have about 140 of my recipes. And in this one, I don't have many. But there are 800 in here, 1,400 in these two. These two go together. And then this is my latest one. This tells you the story of the second one. Okay, I'm 79, and um, I'm, I'm just kind of run circles around the little whippersnappers. <laughs> People say that, I don't know. Yeah, you seem that it's way. It's true, I have a lot of energy, I'm very thankful. And um, so, and I love gardening. And my husband and I used to travel a lot, but since he's passed, that part of me is gone. I sold my house in Florida. And we're Florida residents. I'm now back a Kentucky resident. I love that. Don't like paying Kentucky income tax, but I like being a Kentucky resident. So I have my gardens behind my house on Lexington Avenue in 2008. I decorate the front porch. It's wonderful at Christmas time. Wow. Everybody comes by to take their family portraits. And then they come by for proms and homecoming and weddings. Wow. So I have a wonderful place for pictures, a wonderful garden out back across the alley with dahlias and zinnias and a few marigolds and a few things that the deer haven't eaten yet. I love all these vegetables. My cookbooks have tons of recipes for vegetables because I've been doing this all my life. And so there are lots of ways to fix eggplant and zucchini and it's just, it's kind of a labor of love and um, it, it gets a little bit harder. It's harder to get help. I need, do need some help. So it's a struggle sometimes. It's not always fun like everybody thinks it is. Because really I have to prepare, plant, weed, cultivate, pick, cook, and deliver is what I'm doing. I, last week I delivered like eight things of beans to people already cooked. <laughs> are you just giving all this away? Oh, yes. Yeah. These are just friends who would enjoy them. And, and, and uh, it's just kind of a, what do they call it in church? You're not a calling, but a... It's kind of a calling. What do they call it in flower? Because I used to do flowers for hospice. 
I'm a sharer. I like to share whatever God has given me. People, my houses have been on tours, my gardens are on tours. Um, I share the produce, just share all this because right. God's been very good to our family. All right. So you're giving her, this is four different kinds, isn't it? Yeah. Of, yeah. of, of have I got squash? You all four kinds? Oh, I think. Oh, do I, you have this kind? But I have six kinds. See how this sticks up? Uh huh. That's a, it's called, uh, well, my chart. I have my chart. And this is a different kind. This is stripe, but I don't, I think this is a different type. Is that the gray stripe? What they call gray stripe? No, I have a gray one, but that's not a gray. This is a red hook, a fourth hook, I think. And this is crook neck and straight. Did I put your cucumber in there? Oh, how do you fry zucchini? I can't get it to stick. I can't get okay, it to Okay, you gotta, when you, when you do your zucchini, I put it in the egg and then in my mix of flour, cornmeal, a pinch of sugar, and salt, and pepper. And and I toss that stuff around. You cut it yeah, I cut, like that. I'm I'm cut it in, in the circle. Okay. And I've also done it in the strips. The strips deep fry really nicely. I just don't have a Rain started to pour, and Angie and I made a run for the car. You will see Judy's Lexington Avenue garden later in the series. Thanks for watching, and please share my Kentucky road trip with your friends.